We are all aware of the importance of being cautious around strangers, but when it's your own friends who betray you, it takes terror to a whole new level. Mary Collins believed she was meeting up with some friends to enjoy sushi, but little did she know that the dinner invitation was a carefully laid trap. As the night progressed, the unsuspecting 20-year-old found herself ensnared in a nightmarish ordeal. Her body was ultimately wrapped in duct tape and concealed within the confines of a bedroom mattress. Perhaps you haven't heard this harrowing tale before, and you're not alone in that. Mary's case should have garnered national attention, but the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic overshadowed her tragic story. Allow me to bring you up to speed. We can all agree that COVID-19 had a way of unsettling our collective sanity, right? Remember those initial moments when we were all grappling with the uncertainty. Unfortunately for Mary Collins, a 20-year-old young woman, this tumultuous period in American history marked the end of her existence. She vanished on March 28, 2020, in Charlotte, North Carolina, coinciding with the day when COVID-19 lockdowns came into effect across the state. The passing of 24 hours brought growing concern to Mary's grandmother and legal guardian, Mia. She had been trying to reach Mary, but her calls remained unanswered. A day later, Mary's friends shared a video of themselves enjoying sushi, Mary's favorite meal. In the photo, Mia spotted her granddaughter, seemingly fine. So, why was she not responding to her phone? Mia traced Mary's phone signal to an apartment in North Davidson, a local area referred to as Noda. This historic neighborhood, known for its vibrant art scene, lay about a mile away from the city center. Upon her arrival, Mia encountered two individuals, Kelly Lavery and Lavi Pham, who were among Mary's friends. Lavi, who had a brief romantic involvement with Mary in the past, was now with Kelly. However, neither of them had any knowledge of Mary's whereabouts since their sushi outing. This situation seemed peculiar. The last signal from Mary's cell phone originated from the apartment Mia had entered. Mia conducted an extensive search, meticulously scouring every nook and cranny, but there was no trace of Mary. The memory of that place lingered in Mia's mind, the overwhelming scent of dish soap and pumpkin spice that filled the apartment. Disheartened, Mia left and promptly filed a police report that same night. Then, on April 2nd, a witness emerged, bringing forth a chilling narrative. During a conversation with her friend, Jimmy Salerno, the topic of Mary's case arose. As the story unfolded, Jimmy disclosed a chilling account of what transpired at a party held in the Noda apartment, where Mary, Kelly, Lavi, and himself were present. Allegedly, they bound Mary, forcibly confining her within the confines of a bathtub, subjecting her to relentless beatings. Tragically, the situation escalated when one of them brandished a knife, ending Mary's life through a fatal stabbing. Following this heinous act, they tightly enveloped Mary's lifeless body with duct tape and encased her in plastic bags intended for trash disposal. Their plan involved opening a section of the mattress and concealing her remains inside it. Lavi and Kelly had intended to incinerate the mattress, eradicating any evidence. However, as detectives from the missing persons division approached the door of the Noda apartment, the atmosphere was about to change. Lavi responded to the detectives' arrival and granted them permission to search the premises. It is important to note that despite Lavi's consent, there are legal restrictions on the extent of a search that law enforcement can conduct without a written warrant. Contrary to what we often see in movies, where investigators execute search warrants with vigorous force, tearing through drawers and slashing pillows, leaving the house in disarray as they search for evidence, the reality is more nuanced. The circumstances were distinct this time. A consent search was underway. If Lavi explicitly instructed the police not to inspect a certain area or open a particular object, they were obliged to respect his wishes. Therefore, they refrained from opening the mattress, limiting their actions to lifting it up. Disappointingly, no signs of Mary's body were found. Consequently, the officers departed, granting Kelly and Lavi another day of temporary freedom. However, on April 4th, a second witness came forward, recounting a similar tale. Both witnesses firmly asserted that Mary's lifeless form resided within the mattress. Prompted by this compelling information, the authorities returned for another search, armed with a duly obtained search warrant. They headed straight to the bedroom and proceeded to open the mattress, leading them to the gruesome discovery, a blood-stained makeshift body bag. 
Mary, a mere 20 years old, met an untimely demise. Those who knew her, including former teachers, depicted her as an innocent soul. Words like lovely, gracious, and kind were used by her friends and family to describe her. She possessed a gentle nature and an inherent inclination to trust others. According to her aunt Kara, Mary radiated a unique and radiant light. Mary possessed a playful and affectionate nature, leaving her aunt Kara bewildered as to why anyone would inflict such harm upon her niece. The entire Charlotte community echoed the same sentiment, questioning the motives behind this senseless act. Mary, who resided with a rare genetic disorder commonly referred to as the George Syndrome, faced unique challenges. The George Syndrome ranks as the second most prevalent genetic disorder, surpassed only by Down Syndrome. As stated by the Mayo Clinic, individuals with the George Syndrome exhibit various medical symptoms, including compromised immune function and heart defects. They may experience difficulties such as a cleft palate, struggles with eating, and evident learning disabilities. Mary's family attests that she possessed the mental capacity akin to that of a 15-year-old girl. Basic tasks like navigating her neighborhood or counting change proved challenging for her, and she grappled with a severe speech impediment. Nevertheless, throughout her journey, Mary consistently embraced an optimistic outlook and saw the best in people. Sadly, Mary naively assumed that everyone possessed the same innocence and kindness as herself, failing to perceive the demons lurking in the shadows. While it is known that Mary and Lavi were previously involved romantically, the nature and extent of her relationship with Kelly remain uncertain. According to Aunt Kara, Kelly had a history of posting cruel remarks about Mary on Facebook. She was described as the envious and malicious type, reminiscent of the archetypal mean girl. For months, she had relentlessly targeted Mary as an online bully. Among her hurtful actions was a comment from Kelly that read, You, nobody would desire you, and if I were you, I would wish to vanish immediately. This statement, as events unfolded, would reveal a striking level of hypocrisy. Conversations documented in text messages exchanged between the trio prior to Mary's tragic demise unveiled Kelly and Labby's desire for a threesome involving Mary. Her refusal to participate in the proposed threesome seemed to set the gears of a murderous plan into motion. Despite being a young and attractive girl, Mary grappled with deep-seated insecurities regarding her self-image. According to Mia, Mary was persistently self-conscious and would go to great lengths just to find acceptance and companionship. Surprisingly, despite Kelly's bullying nature, Mary held on to the belief that there was goodness within her, considering her a friend. This misguided perception led her to think they shared a genuine bond. Around 2.30 in the afternoon on March 28th, Mary climbed into an Uber destined for Kelly and Labby's apartment. Since Mary never acquired driving skills, Kelly arranged for the Uber to pick her up. Upon Mary's arrival, Jimmy Salerno was already present at the apartment. The group commenced drinking, and surreptitiously, one of them slipped Xanax into Mary's drink. Once the drug took effect and Mary became incapacitated, the trio callously forced her into the bathtub, sealing her tragic fate. They subjected her to a brutal assault, repeatedly beating and stabbing her until she succumbed to her injuries and bled to death. The autopsy report revealed a horrifying count of 133 stab wounds inflicted across her entire body. The exact number of wounds that led to her demise remains uncertain as she was unable to scream or raise her voice due to a speech impediment that likely impeded her cries for help from being heard. After the vicious attack finally concluded, the trio found themselves in need of assistance to clean up and conceal Mary's lifeless body. Jimmy resorted to reaching out to one of his recent Tinder matches, an 18-year-old girl named America Deal, who allegedly hurriedly arrived to aid them in handling Mary's remains. It is important to note the choice of the word prepare in describing their actions. First, they fastened a black shirt and socks tightly around Mary's neck, as well as a red shirt around her right ankle as detailed in the autopsy report. These makeshift bindings may have served the purpose of manipulating Mary's body without direct contact. Subsequently, they enclosed her lower half within a black trash bag. Finally, they proceeded to completely envelop her entire body from head to toe in layers of duct tape, effectively creating a macabre mummification. Allegedly, our perpetrators proceeded to douse Mary's lifeless body in a concoction of dish detergent and pumpkin-spiced shower gel, aiming to mask any odor. 
They then encased her in two additional black trash bags before stuffing her inside a mattress. The following day, Levy brazenly posted a social media video featuring himself, Kelly, and Mary seemingly enjoying a sushi outing. Unbeknownst to Mary's loved ones, who assumed she was still alive and spent their first day of lockdown in the company of friends, she had already met a tragic demise. On April 5th, Kelly, Levy, and Jimmy were promptly apprehended. Upon entering the Noda residence, police found Kelly unresponsive due to heavy drug use, necessitating efforts to rouse her for formal arrest. Jimmy, on the other hand, was taken into custody at his residence near the University of North Carolina. During the investigation, police discovered incriminating evidence on Jimmy's phone, including notes pertaining to bleach and dish detergent. Furthermore, his phone records placed him inside the Noda apartment at the time of Mary's murder. However, one suspect remained at large. America Deal fled to Colorado, managing to evade capture until June 2nd when local authorities eventually apprehended her. She was subsequently extradited to Charlotte to face trial for her alleged involvement in the heinous crime. America's legal defense team argues that she was coerced into concealing Mary's body, pointing to Kelly as the orchestrator who issued commands to everyone involved. Through astute legal maneuvering, she managed to secure her release on a $100,000 bond. Lavi Pham, on the other hand, entered a plea of not guilty and is presently awaiting trial as of 2023. In April 2022, Kelly Lavery pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and received a prison sentence of 25 to 32 years. Jimmy, however, maintained his plea of not guilty. He spent three years incarcerated before being granted a $250,000 bond in January 2023. Unfortunately, recent reports indicate that he remains in prison, unable to procure the substantial amount required for his release. During Jimmy's bond hearing, Mary's grandmother delivered a poignant and direct statement, recounting the horrific details of her granddaughter's demise. They drained her of life in the bathtub, like a defenseless animal. Jimmy's actions represent one of the most heinous cases ever witnessed in Charlotte. To Mary's grandmother, his release on bond felt like a painful insult. A plea deal offered to Kelly proved insufficient in her eyes. The fact that America still roams freely sends a chilling shiver down her spine. Regarding Lavi, Mary's grandmother may be growing increasingly disillusioned with the prospect of the legal system working in her favor. That concludes our story. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe.